Coca-Cola is the Junk Monk Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, who you know from Instagram at Hardens and Hard Hats. And I'm Noah, your co-host, you know from right now. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are picking up where the Drunk Monk podcast left off, hosted by Keiko Agena and Will S. Choi. I was a big fan of their podcast and was really sad to see that they stopped their show, so I decided to pick it up, and I managed to find me a co-host. Okay, Will and Keiko did their show a little drunk, and so we're going to do our show with a little junk. I've got my junk food here, which is some candy. It's Pez. Oh, people! everybody knows what Pez is. Um, we don't actually have a Pez dispenser, so we just have him sitting at Little That's Monk's so feet. Sad. And Little Monk is dispensing your Pez. Yeah, exactly. And I have some pumpkin spice flavored yogurt covered pretzels. And it's March, so don't ask how old these are. Ew. Also, you must know, I have seen every episode of Monk. I'm a huge fan. I started watching in about 2007, and for the most part, watched it as it aired. I've seen the pilot episode and those we've done on the show, and a few scattered here and there in different seasons. So, if you're ready to start the show, Toby, take it away. Here's what happened. Okay, so this is actually going to be our season four wrap-up. Very excited to get started. As you know, we have reviewed and rated 16 episodes, all 16 episodes of season four. Mm -hmm. But we've also learned some more about Monk and got a little bit more into the Monk verse. So what we're going to do this episode is we're going to put a spin on each of our segments. And of course, we're going to end it with a countdown. Yeah. So So, let's get started. Let's start with Monk catchphrases. Let's do that. Okay. It's season four. We honestly, we don't have any new catchphrases per se, but there is one episode, Mr. Monk and Little Monk, where we learn where he gets all of his catchphrases from. Yeah. Right? We see him say, unless I'm wrong, which you know, I'm not, right? These are yes. all said by Little Monk. If you just imagine him saying it, it's so cute. We see it's a gift and a curse. Do you remember where he got that one from? His mother? Oh, the lunch lady. Yes, I remember that. So the lunch lady says it and he repeats it. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any that you have? Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. And you're the guy, or he's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he says you're the guy to Leo. Mm-hmm. So that's cute. And then you also have you'll thank me later, which that's the one he gets from his mom. Yes. And then the last one would be that he solved the case. So he has a little here's what happened. Yeah. Which, you know, he has the simultaneous here's what happened with his older self in the future. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So, yeah, so those... Those are the only catchphrases that we have. Again, it's season four, so it's not like he has a bunch of new things that he says, but we do see the origin of his, you know, his little catchphrases and stuff, so that's kind of cool. All right, next we have relationships between Monk and his friends, Mm -hmm. Trudy, so... Family members. What are some relationships? Okay, well, actually, I'm going to start with one that really doesn't have anything to do with Monk. Yeah. We've got the captain's marriage. We see the captain's marriage actually end in the season. Uh-huh. So, I mean, we're assuming, well, we know, actually, in the pilot episode, I don't know if you remember this. I know you've seen it, but it's been a very long time, and it's a very, you know, minute detail, I guess, yeah. would be that when we're introduced to the captain, <clears throat> Monk walks up to him, and he mentions, oh, you and Karen have been having problems. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? You know, this is when he was grumpy, Stoudemire. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, you've obviously been staying at the Ramada. You have, like, a cup that says the Ramada Inn. Your collar is unadjusted, and you missed a spot shaving or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, Karen would never let you leave the house like that. So if you take that clue from the pilot episode and flash forward to four seasons later, it's kind of like, wow, you know? Like, mm-hmm. four seasons of foreshadowing right there. <laughs> yeah. We also have another relationship being Monk and his dad. We learn a little bit more about that with the, his dad coming back, and obviously we don't see him. But Ambrose and Monk kind of blame themselves for him leaving. Ambrose has everything intact from the day that his father left. Mm-hmm. His yeah. entire study. And there's definitely some sealed-up anger there. Oh, yeah. That scene, that scene was... 
rough whenever, I think it was, their dad was late. He was supposed to be there at exactly 8 o'clock. Yeah. And it was like getting to be like 30, 45 minutes after that. Yeah. And Ambrose freaks out, starts throwing the candy. And Adrian gets up and he starts taking all the stuff from his dad's study, putting it in trash bags. Mm-hmm. And then the only reason he stops is because he gets the call from Stottlemyre and they solve the case. Yeah. But other than that, it's like him and Ambrose have like... Besides the uh, all the stuff that we see in Little Monk, right? We see other things where, like, they are in pictures and they're standing, you know, two feet apart. They yeah. don't touch each other. There's absolutely no affection mm-hmm. from either, you know, of their parents. And then, obviously, his dad left. Yes. And so, yep, that's, that's yeah. him and Ambrose. And then the last one is actually going to be that we had our first full season with Natalie. Yeah. That's pretty cool. She's... Still settling in, and a lot of the episodes here are about the trust between those two partners. And, yeah, it's really nice to see that building and them connecting. Yep. Make some really interesting episodes. Yep, that's true. Um, Yeah, we see, I I feel like we kind of see Natalie start to become more of, like, a caretaker. And while Natalie doesn't go, like, full nurse, like Sharona, obviously, Sharona was a nurse and was hired to be Monk's nurse. So she has that caretaker like a health physician, you know, like yeah, that kind of sort of persona Yeah, when it comes to Monk. But by the end of the season, we start to see her settle more into her own as, as a role of an assistant, more so than a nurse or someone who, yeah. you know, has taken him out of a, a deep hole, kind of like Sharona had. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of cool because it kind of makes you feel like Monk is more normal. I feel like they took this opportunity to kind of push Monk's character forward Mm -hmm. instead of, you know, like being, which I think we saw this in the bonus, some of the bonus content we watched for this episode, or for this season, season. um, where they said, you know, we kind of had to decide if we were going to make Monk lapse back or go forward Mm -hmm. with Natalie, you know, after Sharona leaves, is he going to revert you know, take a dip like he did when Trudy died? Or is he going to... Are we going to see that Monk is okay? Mm-hmm. And that he... Yes, he's going to he's gonna grieve over Sharona just a little bit, but then Natalie taking over yeah. um, and pushing that, pushing his story forward like Some that. Some good change for him. Yeah. And then as far as Natalie, his persona again actually goes... Um, in the end of season three, when she hops on here, right, she's more of a tough girl persona. And I feel like um, I, I don't think Noah has really seen that much of her acting that way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you maybe remember, like, he, when he gets stuck in traffic. Yes. Where you had a comment where you said, you know, like, what's wrong with Natalie? She's kind of acting weird. Yeah. And, and I took note of that because I was like, exactly, she's, they change her character. Mm-hmm. She was, you know, kind of mean to Monk about like, oh, it's got to be a two-way street and yeah, yeah all this kind yeah. of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So they kind of, they kind of settle her into more of the role where it's like, yes, it is a two-way street, but also Mr. Monk can only help you to a certain extent. But when it really, really counts, he will be there for you. So, yeah. Yeah. Like in the episode, Mr. Monk stays in bed. Yeah. He really steps up. That's why I really like that episode. Yeah. 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 So. I think that's good with the. Next on here is what happened. Trudy's case. What do we learn about Trudy's case, Guinness? Okay. So, got to be honest here. In a lot of, I feel like in some seasons, and I really don't remember the ones going forward, but I feel like they take such a long span of time where they don't even discuss, like, anything with her case or yeah. move that story forward at all, honestly. But in Mr. and Mrs. Monk, we at least we kind of see another possible motive for her death, right, for her mm-hmm. murder. Because, yes, we already know she's been a journalist, but the fact that they took that storyline and kind of said, hey, look, this is something that could have happened. Now, we... We essentially know that she is dead. She is not out there and hiding somewhere. Yeah. But it still kind of gives you an idea of like, oh, she could have written a story about somebody and they could have murdered her because of that. Yes. So again, it's it all obviously turned out to be fake, mm-hmm. but it kind of gives you like some insight to maybe possibly what could have happened to her. Yeah. And then we also learn a bunch of little stuff about Trudy, like Monk keeping the unopened present from Trudy, mm-hmm. as well as... Monk always going to the place where they had the, their honeymoon, the wine. Oh, yeah, that was... In uh, the wine episode. Yep, yep, that's true. So we have a bunch of little things like that as well. 
Um, and she's allergic to fish. Yep, that's true, yeah. Monk, in one of the episodes, bumps his head. Mr. Monk bumps his head. Mm-hmm. They almost find the six-finger man. Yeah. Or, not almost, because... Yeah. Again, it was fake. It's a fake lead. Yeah. They're trying to do, kind of push off that, but also not seem like they're pushing it off. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Then that's what I was, that's basically what I was saying. Yeah. Like, they, it's like they try their hardest to not advance the story too much to where you're like, oh, like... <laughs> Monk has yeah. to continue, and he has to continue to have all of these quirks and all these things because he can't have that closure yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Very good points. Um, so what do we learn, or how does Monk kind of progress in getting back his badge? Well, that's kind of another instance where they, again, they push it off, and they push it off, yes. and they push it off. So in season four, I honestly, I don't remember anywhere where they talk about him getting his badge back, you know, maybe offhanded comments about it, but not like in the other seasons where it's like someone promises that they will testify for him or someone promises they will help him get his badge back. Yeah. I don't remember any of that. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But we do see a little a little win for Monk in the episode of I I wanna say is it the big reward? I where, think so. Because at the end they're on a uh, it's the one where they're on a uh, hiring freeze. Mm-hmm. I think it's that one where he, at the beginning he can't afford his groceries, <clears throat> and then there ends up being the diamond, and they can't afford, you know, yeah. whatever. So anyway, so at the end of the episode, Captain Stoudemire makes a reference to Monk being put on retainer at the San Francisco Police Department, and he says that they give them 16 cases per year for the next two years. Which, like we said before, is a nod to them getting renewed for, for two more seasons, yeah. 16 episodes each, right? Yeah. So it's a silver lining for us as the viewers, obviously, because we get two more seasons of Monk. Yeah. And then for him as well, him and Natalie are going to at least get 16 cases a year, mm-hmm. which when you think about it, it's kind of like uh, Not 16 a lot. like sixteen cases. Like, that's... Uh, but we know that he they're... He solves them in like a day. <laughs> yeah. We know that they're having... Cases off screen, so yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we had no no Mr. Monk in the badge, but Mr. Monk in the retainer. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So are you ready to uh, go on to our next segment? Yes. Okay. So instead of doing our what did you like and what did you not like, we're going to do what did you think that one of the biggest lows this season was, Noah? Obviously. One of the biggest lows this season was The Office, not the TV show, the the episode um, Mr. Monk Goes to the Office, is that what it's called? Yep. Mr. Monk Goes to the Office, where Monk is having a great time, but it's his little quirks that doesn't let him fit in, mm-hmm. and it's really sad, and he can't put on the bowling shoes, Yep. and so that's one of the, that's in my opinion, one of the, the lowest of lows. Yeah. For Monk. He also says detectives are lonely. Yeah. That's really sad. That's really sad. When he figures it out that the couple's dating and they're say, they say, oh, you should be a detective. And he's like, no, 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 no. Detectives, they're they're really lonely. Mm-hmm. That's really sad. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely would agree. One of the lows. Um, oh, also the the note cards. You loved the note cards. I loved the, Yeah. I, I well, well, I love them because they're funny, yeah, but they're yeah, also yeah. really sad. Mm-hmm. When you think about it, it's like, oh, no social interaction for Monk. So our next low is going to be Mr. Monk Goes Home Again, right? Which we kind of talked about a little bit in the relationships with his father and his brother. Mm-hmm. But the deep-seated anger, obviously, towards his father. The fact that they miss his dad coming home in the end. Yes. That seems to really crush Adrian in a way where it's it's kind of... I thought it was actually kind of interesting. I never really mentioned this before. But I feel like it was kind of interesting that Monk was so crushed by it and Ambrose was com- comforting him about it, if that makes sense. And, and I'm, I'm assuming maybe you can maybe chime in on this, but do you think that might have been because Ambrose had faith that he would come back? Oh, and yeah. And, like, knew, like, like, oh, he'll be back. And Monk was surprised by it. And, like, oh, my gosh, we did miss him. I don't know. I don't really know how to explain why Monk 
cared so much. I guess because he really does want to know where he is or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things where you're like, I don't need my dad. I don't care. And then you're like, but I missed him. Yeah. Like, I guess I And know. it's also, I feel like him with Trudy as well, it's one of those cases that he could never solve. Those two cases, or not cases, yeah. those two mysteries that were most important to him. Yeah. Which, to be fair, he doesn't look for his dad, yeah. but the fact that he blames himself and Ambrose blames himself mm -hmm. for his dad leaving, it's like they really don't know the reason that their dad left, and so they just blame themselves. Yeah. So that's pretty sad. And then also, like, you have that part of the episode, but then you also have Ambrose almost dying. Yes. Like, that was, again, that that scene gets me every time they're in that yes. ambulance and they're crying and Natalie's crying because Natalie mm -hmm. has bonded with him. She said maybe to a date with Ambrose, yes. you know. I know this isn't yeah. about Natalie, but it's like they're all three crying that he's going to die in the in the mm -hmm. ambulance. So that, that definitely is a low. Like, definitely. Yeah. That deserves the number two spot for sure. Yeah. Um, the number one spot would probably be Mr. Monk and Mrs. Monk, where Monk sees Trudy on the street and just completely breaks down. Yeah. He's super, like, depressed and twitches out and starts touching all the light poles around him. He's in this phase of denial where he just can't think. Dr. Kroger comes over, try to co tries to comfort him, and he, like, helps him drink a glass of water. Yeah, golly. It's really sad to I mean, watch. Kroger were so good in that. Yeah. Oh, and then Trudy dies in his arms. I think. Oh, yes. That's also really sad. That's, oh my gosh. Yeah. The woman who looks just like her is dying in her. And then she, with her dying breath, she's like, you love her. I'll tell her. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. That is rough. I mean, that's, I mean, how is that not the number one spot easy and of course, yeah, of course, right, going back to it, of course they start the episode by Monk saying, I think I can finally be yeah. happy. And you're like, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. really happening right now? Yeah. And so, yeah, again, it was that was one of those forced kind of storylines, like, okay. But exactly, they made him fall even further. Yeah. Ugh, man. Yeah. Definitely number one. Um, And then... Other than those three low lowest of lows, we have the three highest of highs. So what would you think the third highest of high would be? Okay, so this one's kind of interesting because this is Mr. Monk bumps his head, where he does have a pretty low moment in it where he realizes when he forgets everything, right? He forgets who, what his name is, who he is. Whenever he says that he doesn't like himself, mm -hmm. and you're kind of like, oh, geez. Dr. Kroger said that he's probably meeting himself for the first time, which he does. Mm -hmm. And so he discovers he doesn't like himself of how twitchy and everything is. But the high point would definitely be that he realizes that he loves detection, detecting things. He likes, be you know, he doesn't know that he is a detective. Yeah. So he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily love being a detective, but he loves that he can do that and that's mm -hmm. what feels he said everything just started clicking 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 when i was on that crime scene when i was at that crime scene everything was just clicking and yes. every yeah. that's when his memory even starts coming back because he's putting himself in these high situations where he's like all right let's call the captain mm -hmm. and you're like oh there's monk and so he's starting to feel you know he's starting to come back into it because of how comfortable he feels doing that. Yeah. He's finding his passion again and yeah. his rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. And so now we're on number two. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this was, like, number one, like, barely. as No, not barely. Yeah. Because number one's just too good. Yeah. Number one's just too good. But number two is also amazing. It's Mr. It's, Monk stays in mm -hmm. bed, and Mr. Monk is super sick, and he basically overcomes all of his, like, phobias, his sickness, also, he's also been neglecting kind Natalie, of Natalie the whole, the whole time. Episode. But at the very end, he comes in and saves the day. Natalie's being, like, uh, tackled? Not really tackled. Natalie's being... She's being held at knife point. Yeah, she's being happening. held at knife point. And Monk swoops in, tackles the guy that was holding her to knife point, the super creepy delivery guy, and boom, right into a paper stack so he didn't really get hurt. Yeah. 
But, man, he flew. Super monk. He flew. He was super monk. But, yeah, number one is the best, which is... The standoff. Standoff. Okay, the standoff with the astronaut fighter jet, of course. Yep. When the astronaut is going to take the doll into the sky, and he's going to drop it out of Uh the chute. And then Monk and Natalie, you, of course, you know, are standing up to him, chasing him down. And then, oh, I guess I should preface with, this is this is also a very low point in the season where Monk, you see him in Kroger's office, he's admitting how intimidated he is by any man that's, you know, a real man like mm-hmm. the astronaut. And we see him in the confrontation with the astronaut where he says, you're a flincher, you're a flincher. Mm-hmm. And he says all this, you know, basically crap talk to him. Yeah. And then at the end... He runs in front of his jet when he's trying to take off to get rid of the evidence, and he stands right in front of this fighter jet with this little tippy-tip nose Mm -hmm. right in his face, and he doesn't flinch. Yeah. At all. It's a huge win for him. But just at all. (laughs) And then he, and then, oh, and then all the guys are drawing their guns. They have the lasers pointed at him. They're like, stand down. And he doesn't freak out and everything. Oh, it's so good. Stand off. Number one, highest of high. Yeah. So, our next segment would be, he's the guy. Okay, so basically how he's the guy is going to work, usually we point out in our episodes who was a cameo guest star that we recognized. And instead, this is the season for wrap-up, we will be telling you our favorite guest stars and our honorable mention. Yeah. So, Candace, who... Was your favorite guest star and honorable mention? Okay, I'll start with my honorable mention, and it's got to be Lori Metcalf in Mr. Monk Bumps His Head. That's a good one. (laughs) She is, yikes. Like, that's like the word, like, yikes, yeesh, um, ew, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like all of the onomatopoeias you can think of. They all describe Lori Metcalf's performance as Cora. It's so good. Like, who who doesn't want some Cora kisses right now? Yeah. Like, every time you watch that, you're just like, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Okay, so my honorable mention would be Eric Allen Kramer, who is Bob Duncan in Good Luck, Charlie. But he's also the, I, I don't think we know his name, but he is in Mr. Monk and the Astronaut. The neighbor across the street from... Mm-hmm. The dead the, girl. The dead girl, yeah. So, Bob Duncan. He actually has good lines. What's his line? Oh, the astronaut says to him, of course you can come to uh, the launch party or whatever. And he's like, of course you can come. You are a taxpayer, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sales tax. <laughs> so, yeah, he has a really funny line there. <laughs> That's pretty good for a very minor guest star. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, so my favorite guest star, of course, I I mean, hopefully you guys count this as a guest star, but John Turturro and Mr. Monk Goes Home Again. I don't care. I'm counting it because he's amazing. And every time he's on the screen, I just get all kinds of giddy and I love it. I can't. What was his good scene this time? Probably when he gets angry, when he throws the candy is pretty intense. He's talking about his Nism and Wars. That's sad. Mm-hmm. Whenever he keeps correcting everybody about Frankenstein's monster. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, his really, really sweet scene with Natalie where he gets his maybe from her. Oh, yes. you know what we didn't talk about was when they go into the attic. He asks Adrian. Oh, yeah. If, he if he's likes, dating yeah, if Natalie. He and then he's Natalie. like, what? No, 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 no. And he's like, what? You two are both single. She's a widow. You're a widower. Like, it just makes sense. And he's like, no, no, no. And he's like, okay, so can I ask her out? And Like, it's, so, oh, my gosh. That's, that's a also a really great scene. Mm-hmm. We didn't mention that last time. So, yep, that's my favorite guest star, John Turturro, Emmy winner for Monk. That's it. Number one, my favorite guest star would have to be Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. Because of just how funny he is. That's your number one? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Marty Eels. Marty Eels. He yeah. is pretty good. Okay, so our next... Junk, junk time. time. My favorite segment. I know, this is really fun. Junk okay. time. Junk time. So I'm going to start off with... A little quick um, social media, not update. It's actually a wrap up. It's I'm I'm staying true to 
our little wrap up here. So if you don't know, if you don't follow us on Instagram already, we're on Instagram at Junk Monk Podcast. Don't forget it. And so every Thursday I do a Here's a Thing Thursday where I take these questions from Junk Time and I ask our loyal and faithful Instagram audience to chime in on the question that I ask, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we've got what's your favorite junk food, right? Every person that answered that question said pizza. So that oh, was, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, that, I thought that was interesting. Um, we had a week where I asked, do you understand art? Like, do you get art, right? That was in Mr. Monk and Little Monk, where they go to the art restoration guy. And 56% of you said, of course, but 44% said not really, which <laughs> that's me. That's a big hard, hard pass on that one. I'm an of course kind of guy. I don't get abstract. But, you know, art. It's fun to look at. I like to go to art museums. Yeah. But my comment when I go to art museums is, I could do that. Yeah. That's for <laughs> when, sure. When, when people, exactly, when yeah. people drew this really fantastic line with yeah. a circle, and I'm like, mm hmm, yep, I could do that. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our Here's the Thing Thursday from the fashion show. If you were Julie, would you do the fashion show? 53% said yes. If you were Natalie, would you would you let Julie do the fashion show? 62% said no. Actually, absolutely not. If you were Julie, would you have run away to be in the fashion show? 67% said yeah. Uh. If you were Natalie, would you interrupt the fashion show and pull Julie off stage? 64% said yes. Well done. With three exclamation marks. What would you do with a million dollars, like Mr. Monk and the reward? Uh, we had... One person say travel abroad. We had someone else say invest. That's what my answer was. Yeah. We had one person said say I'll meet Tony. <laughs> That's awesome. And then our favorite answer, of course, was from Michael Clayton on Facebook, mm -hmm. who said I would pay to get a guest spot on your podcast. Oh yeah. So I was like, oh, favorite answer. Oh yeah. So that was funny, and then. Let's see, uh, one of our last ones was, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. We had a veterinarian, and we also had a lawyer. So that was pretty they fancy. They wanted to That's be a veterinarian they, yeah, and a lawyer. Exactly. Uh, I, I wanted to be a veterinarian until I realized that I Gross. don't like sick animals. Not I don't like sick animals. They're sad. I don't, they're sad. They're way, yeah. way, way too sad. So then I wanted to be like a zoologist for a long time. So Yeah. We also had, do you think that... Karen and the captain were a good couple. And a lot of people said that they were a good couple uh, because they were faithful, but very incompatible, which is, I, I think, mm, most people, yeah, pretty much everybody said they were a good couple, but very incompatible. So that makes yeah. sense. And then our very last one that I'm going to do is, what would you get Monk for Secret Santa? I love this question mm -hmm. so much. We have cleaning supplies and Sierra Springs bottled water. We have someone said a beautiful rock, which makes sense because I did, that was, I thought that was a really sweet one because he loves, uh, like, he gets Benji a rock polishing kit one time. Mm -hmm. So it was very cute. Uh, sanitizer times 100. <laughs> Either a personalized case for his clarinet or maybe if it exists, a kit especially for cleaning the clarinet. Also very clever. Yeah. We have a personalized wipe container. That's that smart. That would be nice. That would be really nice. A case of wipes. And then we have 10 cases of Sierra Springs, Windex wipes, and a shirt inspected by number eight. That one's good. That is really good. Yeah. Okay, so I think that was it. That was it. Dang. Yep. How crazy was Monk this season? How crazy? Well, this is kind of like our here's what happened, in which it's not how crazy was Monk this episode. It's how crazy was Monk this season. So instead of, you know, rating the season, we are going to go through Monk's phobias, Monk's eccentricities, and his top crazy moments this season. All right, so let's get started. So we've got weddings. Yes. Right? Now... Is it necessarily a phobia? I don't know. But when Natalie asks him to go with her, he's pretty weird about it. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, no, uh, -uh no, no, no. And you're like, really? He must be afraid of weddings. So Yeah. Mr. Monk is afraid of mice as well. 
uh, we see that in the captain's marriage with Devo, a.k.a. Ricky the Rat. Yes, that is true. We also see that we hear in Mr. Monk and the Astronaut that he actually has 103 phobias. Yes. Right? So we know there's a list already, but here we have a number. Mm-hmm. 103 fears, so that's quite a bit. So I feel like we're just we're just scratching the surface here in season four. Um, he's afraid of public speaking. But a plot hole. We've seen a giant plot hole. We've seen all in the series yeah. that he is afraid of public speaking. Only sometimes. <laughs> but in the wedding episode, he is just going ham on talking in front of a giant crowd. Mm. So I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, he's also afraid of glaciers, and he's also afraid of rodeos. Do you remember the glaciers one? No. <laughs> the the glaciers one is when he's in Dr. Kroger's office, and they're going to oh, work on his aversion therapy. Yes. <laughs> and he says, "Let's start with let's start with something you're afraid of." And he's like, "Let's start with glaciers." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then the rodeos is that same scene. Right? Is it? Yeah, and he's like, he's like, no, let's start with rodeos. He's like, no, glaciers. No, I'm terrified of both. Let's just do heights. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember now. Okay, so we know that he has a super phobia, mm-hmm. right? Which is kind of interesting, and I want to kind of see, is this a plot hole? There's a list of his top ten phobias, and Dentist is not even on that list. So, like, is mm-hmm. that a plot hole, or does superphobias have its own list I that we don't know about? I think it does. Yeah. And, of course, Mr. Monk is not afraid of pirates, because that's just stupid. <laughs> and, and Mr. Monk goes home again. <laughs> yeah. Of course I'm not afraid of pirates. That's just stupid. Because the little kids, they're like, maybe he was afraid oh, yeah, of karate. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Mr. Like, Monk's just kind of like, okay. Yeah. And then the little girl's like, maybe he was afraid of pirates. Arr. <laughs> and Monk goes, not afraid of pirates. That's just stupid. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, so next on How Crazy Was Monk this season, Monk's eccentricities. So what would be one of his eccentricities? Okay, so we know that he coordinates and charts his fridge. <laughs> yes. Right. He might have an eidetic memory where he remembers every day of his life. Yeah, that's kind of another plot hole we've kind of talked about before. We'll, we'll give it to him. He remembers some things very vividly, and then there's other things where he can't remember. So, Like number th- uh, issue 35 of the highlights. Yeah. Yeah. He likes the number 10, which I, I honestly, I can't remember which episode we discover this in, but I've watched the first three seasons and so far he hasn't really mentioned the number 10 very much. And it's a pretty iconic thing for Monk that he does, that is his favorite number. But yeah, like for example, the next one mm-hmm. is he only gets his shirts inspected by number eight. So it's like he doesn't, I guess he just appreciates number eight's work, but maybe number 10 is a hack or something, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. But that's just kind of one of those examples where it's like he could like the number 10, but he doesn't use 10. Um, so. And also, I think this is just like a, a joke, but it's that Mr. Monk brushes 12 times per day and flosses every 90 minutes, which. They say that, but we know that he doesn't do that. He can't do that. There's no way. There's no way. For one, he's not always next to a sink. Exactly. I feel like, I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like we are supposed to have seen him, like, you know, at long periods of time where there's no way he could do yeah. these things. I there's don't know. no way. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny, though. Yes. Um, Natalie reads him the daily weather every single night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is really sweet, for one, but also, I don't know about you, but the reason that I want to know about the weather is so that I know what to wear the next day. Yeah. But Mr. Monk's just going to wear the same thing. Yeah. (laughs) So that's that's kind of funny. We also see one of his eccentricities being he's obsessed with Tupperware, and he says in, which episode is it? I don't think it's relevant. But he says... I think it's in the jury. It is the jury. He says, you know, Natalie, I don't like to shake hands, but let me tell you, if I met the creator of Tupperware, I would shake his hand. Natalie says, he's probably dead. And Monk replies with, well, yes, but he's probably well-preserved in Tupperware. Yeah. (laughs) It's probably perfectly preserved. (laughs) Um, We know that Monk can't share a bathroom. 
Yes. Which we've kind of seen this before, but this is the... This is how he gets out of jury duty. Well, he tries to get out of jury yeah. duty by telling the judge he can't share a bathroom. And also, he can't eat food unless he sees it being prepared. Yes. Which is interesting. So Yeah. He also, in Mr. Monk Stays in Bed, he double bags his Kleenexes. Mm. And he makes Julie do that as well. That's so cute. Yeah. He also eats his alphabet soup in order. Which <laughs> also, you know, we didn't mention last time was that... He freaks out because he thinks he's seeing letters in his soup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, it's alphabet soup. Yeah. And he's like, oh, in that case, A, <laughs> B. That was cute. Um, and then Monk has a recycling method, which is way too long for us to list on here. I have no idea how. Oh, but it's not. I will list oh, it right no. now. I have. Candace. Okay, so I have a normal size sheet of paper, right? I have an oversized post-it note that takes the entire recycling method, takes up this entire giant post-it note. Yes. So, if you're ready to hear Monk's recycling method, here we go. He separates everything into piles exactly 20 inches high. Then he puts each pile into a green 10-gallon reinforced double-ply trash bag, which he double tapes shut. Then he puts that bag into another bag, which he wraps with twine four times counterclockwise and ties each end twice. And you know there's more because Natalie got interrupted. Yes. But that's it. The He's, guy's like, are you screwing with me? Because it sounds super funny. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we also know that he's very persnickety. He's, yeah, I'm, I'm telling the truth. My boss, he's, he's very persnickety. <laughs> uh, what else is one of Monk's eccentricities? Okay, I think this is the last one, is that he is a major lightweight. He gets drunk off of one sip oh, of alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Catch one... me if you can. <laughs> oh no, he he's like, catch me if you can. <laughs> now that tone of voice was more of the and what if I'm a bad boy? What if I'm a bad boy? Oh man, that's good. Okay, so next on how crazy was Monk this season? Monk's top crazy moments of this season. Yep. So, what is one of his top crazy moments, Candace? Okay, my top crazy moment that I chose was one that made me score, I think I I want to say 9 out of 10 uh, shoulder moles, Mm -hmm. which is the shoulder mole. Mm -hmm. Him drawing the shoulder mole onto the dead victim's shoulder. That is... That's uh, gotta be. That has to be crazy. one of the craziest moments. That is crazy. Yes, I can't believe that he did that. Like, I can't believe that he tampered with the evidence and the dead body. Like, and that was supposed to be funny. I don't know. That was weird. That was really weird. Another right up there would be whenever he figures out that Trudy's quote unquote alive, mm-hmm. and he's just twitching out like times twenty, and it's insane and. Yeah. Oh gosh, that it's was so, so sad. sad. Oh, that was sad. And he just sees her across the you street and then he starts down. like pull, 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 touch, 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 touch. Oh, That's yeah. So that one's so sad. All right. That is uh, it for How Crazy Was Monk this season. Yeah. So we are on to our final segment. Rate this season. Obviously, we cannot rate this season because numbers, but we do have our wrap-up countdown. We do. Okay, so how we did this, basically, is we took all of our scores, right? I couldn't use my 10-point whatevers, but I used, you know, just a regular scale. We averaged that scale, Mm -hmm. and we made an average of what that rating was. Then we put it on our handy, big, giant marker board over here that we are reading. Yeah, so we just ranked them. We ranked whatever that average number is. That's how it went up on the board. So we're going to go, we're going to start at number 16, and then we're going to end up with our number one episode. Okay, so number 16 would be Mr. Monk and the Big Reward. I kind of tanked this with my <laughs> rating, which was a two, because of just how mad, just thinking about this episode. Whenever we were watching the bonus features, mm-hmm. they played clips from Mr. Monk and the Big Reward because they were talking about the writing process of Mr. Monk and the Big Reward. And it just made me so mad because you see Gladys in that stinking room 
where she's just so oblivious. She's like, fine, fine, I'll clean the bottom of the tables. And so <laughs> she, and then she finds a diamond, all thanks to Monk. Ugh. So, yeah, I kind of tanked it with a two, but Candace rated it a seven. So, yeah, I'm not too mad at it being at the bottom. Uh, I don't really like treasure hunt type episodes. Like, don't please don't ask me to watch National Treasure. Like, I'm not into that. Yeah. Um, so I'm not mad at it being at the bottom. I didn't like the mooching, what's it called? I didn't like the mooching detectives that were after him. Yeah. And we did, like he said, we watched the bonus content, and I did. I got a little mad again when I saw the taxi scene where he wouldn't get yeah. into the taxi. And then also, I think it was one of my plot holes, I want to say, that where I asked, so I don't really understand. These guys were just going to follow Monk around, and then whenever he found the diamond, what were they going to do? Like, just lie and said they found it? But the writer, one of the writers of the show, said that is exactly what was supposed to happen. That as soon as Monk found the diamond, that they were supposed to pounce. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, well, there you go. Don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not mad at that being at the bottom. So number 15 is actually the other detective. Yes. And we see Marty Eels, who is very annoying. There's not much to say about this besides Marty, his mom, his dumb methods. But yeah, that's why... Number 15. Thud clank. Thud clank. I I like that. I think that's funny. Yeah, there's a there are a lot of Marty scenes that are actually good. Jason Alexander is really good in this. I did like the phone operator thing. I did think it was clever. Uh, not necessarily very smart that the guys were talking about it or very realistic that the yeah. guys were talking about it on the phone. But, yeah. I mean, I liked, the, I liked how they came up with it. I thought mm-hmm. that was actually, it was clever. So, yeah. Not terrible, not terrible, but it is our number 15. So number 14 is going to be Mr. Mung Goes to the Dentist. Yes. So basically, it's hard to watch that one scene, which really tanks the episode. Yeah. In my opinion. Are you talking about where he gets tortured? Yes. Yeah. That's not It's not fun good. to watch. And, it's, and it really is unfortunate because this is the episode that gives us the Rainy Disher Project. Exactly. So it's like... I hate that it's down there, but it's it's almost like one of those things where we're kind of, I want to say, like, how you judge harshly a, um, a season premiere or season finale. Mm-hmm. And it's like, John Favreau, like, that was the role that he got, and that's what you did with it. And yeah. even the gold that is the Randy Disher project, just the rest of the episode was just so blah. And talk about our biggest plot hole. That they do catch the killer's... Uh, the dentists. So they kill one of the robbers, and we know that there was more than one involved. So that just leaves like five other guys. Yeah. That are just still out there. Yeah. So that's a giant plot Huge hole. Huge plot hole. Yeah. yeah. So the A plot wasn't very good, but the B plot, Randy Disher, great. But A plot kind of takes it. Yeah. The next one is going to be the fashion show. Yes. Yep. It's just boring. Yeah, I feel like our biggest critique on this one was that the fashion designer was so, like, ew and pervy and yeah, that we yeah. should have seen more of the shirt lady and her family. Number eight. Yes, Inspector number eight, exactly. So we should have seen more of her and maybe her son and mm-hmm. a lot less of the pervy guy. Like, there was not really... Yes. and And maybe, like, I feel like something that should have been, again, judging it because when it says, Mr. Monk in the fashion show... You think, like, oh, fashion shows are really fun. Mm-hmm. But, like, we didn't get to see Julie walk for, like, very long, and she gets interrupted. Like, I feel like maybe if there was, like, a couple of fashion shows or something, how maybe, like, Mr. Monk got in on the fashion show or yeah. something, you know? Like, I feel like there was some more comedic gold that they missed mm-hmm. with with this one. Yeah. So. Uh, number 12 is Mr. Monk and Little Monk, which is... Of course, whenever he's kind of reliving his childhood. But the reason, why is it so low? Just because, who rated it the lowest? So you actually rated this a six, and I rated it a five. So I guess we both had this feeling of just, meh. Yeah, and I feel like after discussing how bad Sherry was, you were, like, not rooting for Monk to go out with her at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it was, like, one of those things where you're, like, oh, it was sad because Monk didn't get to go out with her. And then when you started dissecting how not good she was, Mm -hmm. you were just, like, yeah, actually, that's probably why it wasn't 
a good episode because yeah. you're like the person that the episode's supposed to be about, like, oh, we're helping so and so help out what happened to her painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we don't like her, so we don't care what happens to her. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's where we were coming from that one. So number eleven Boop. would be. <laughs> You really like this episode. No. I did not at all because it's very sad. Mr. Monk goes to the office. I personally didn't like it because it was really sad. Candace kind of had a more open mind and was more like focused on the good parts, but I was like, it's it, it ends in a sad ending, so I didn't really like that. Yeah, I feel like, and I do understand what you're saying because like you don't want to see Monk sad, but I mean, I feel like this is one of the happiest that times we see him whenever Natalie's looking at him from across the way and he has such a huge smile on his face. He's laughing with everybody. Mm -hmm. He's eating his invisible nachos. He does what he can to fit in and he does. And again, I feel like the thing that was his downfall was the fact of bowling shoes and that could have been easily prevented. So it's like, I, I, I feel like I kind of like look over that. Yeah. The people that were supposed to be his friends they were mean to him, essentially, Mm -hmm. for something that wasn't really that big of a deal. But that doesn't have anything to do with how happy Monk was. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's like, do you want Monk to be friends with people who are going to be like that? Not really. So it's like, it's a kind of okay that he's not friends with those people anymore. But he was really, really happy and felt like he could fit in at some point. So I I like it. Yeah. The next one is going to be number 10. Mm -hmm. Mr. Monk bumps his head. And what did you think about this one? Well, Mr. Monk bumps his head. It's really funny. It's a really funny episode, (laughs) but it kind of lacks in plot, really making, not making sense. Like, I feel like they could have found Monk a little quicker. Well, but I, that's funny because I have like the opposite reaction is that Cora was like, oh my gosh, so much. But I feel like they definitely should have pressed charges against her. And that she is the reason that they didn't find him quickly because she lied about who he was. If everybody else, if he was just wandering around saying, I don't know who I am or where I'm from, they would have been actively looking Mm -hmm. for his family or whatever. Mm -hmm. But since Cora lies about it, they don't. So She um, didn't really harm him. But yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, but it, the, but that's the thing too is that that's why she that's why they didn't press charges because she's just I mean if you really think about it she's lonely like Monk is yeah she's just on the like Monk's on the crazier side mm-hmm. but she's more on the kooky side where it's like she doesn't have any boundaries yeah. and she would she's willing to lie to get a husband and yeah. not do it the normal way but yeah. you know she's lonely like Monk so. You know, he could have maybe related to that in some type of way. Mm-hmm. But Laurie Metcalf is great, hilarious, yeah. really funny, great physical comedy, mm-hmm. great, uh, you know, oh, Jerry, get on the roof and shut up and <laughs> stuff. So, so yeah. yeah, so number 10, Mr. Monk bumps his head. But number nine is Mr. Monk and the Astronaut. Yeah. So this one I can for sure say is bland. Oh, come on. I, I know for a <laughs> fact. There's... Besides the Monk High being, uh, that we talked about earlier, being him in the standoff with the airplane. Yeah. That's it. And this is the first time that we really critiqued that that guy for just being so obviously just, mm-hmm. oh, you can't prove anything. Hmm? You mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. Yeah, he is pretty, he is pretty tooly. It's, yeah. 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 Um, but I did, I rated this episode an 8.25. I stand by it, and Noah rated a five, so yeah. that's that's how it ended up in the number nine spot. But I mean, I think I think I'm okay with it. I feel like going up from here, uh, we're about to hit our top eight, so I feel like we are. I feel like that's okay that it's in the bottom, and we're gonna keep going up. And I feel I'm looking at this list right here. I'm feeling good about it. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. So number eight is Mr. Monk goes to a wedding. Mm-hmm. Natalie's family's wedding. Yeah. And it's really, because this is Natalie's first full season, this is really a lot of Natalie action. Yeah. Natalie's scheme, this is our first Natalie scheme in this season, right? It's great, and we learn a lot about Natalie and Natalie. And the Davenports. The Davenports. The Davenport estate. Yes, the <laughs> Davenport estate. And we also see her get in a little bit of Sharona vibes whenever she steps with her heel on that yeah. girl's throat. Uh-huh. Okay, I don't want to say something that's lacking, but... 
the rattly action. Sure. I wish we would have seen more of that, sure. but it was very cute that Randy wanted to go with her on this date mm-hmm. and that whenever he meets the Davenports, he's trying to make a good impression, but he can't. And he's like, what time is it? What time is it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, so we get a lot of good Randy action when he comes flying in on the cart and uh, what else? He gets hit by the car. That sucks, but he's, he's still... Oh, like, yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. And then, oh, Mr. Monk's toast. Mr. Monk's toast. When he's not afraid of public speaking, remember? Oh, yes, yes, And he gets yes, on there yes, and he's like, yes. and I like Julie to come up here on the stage. <laughs> and she's going to read a poem. And she's like, do you think at your age this is right? <laughs> it's so funny. And he's like, yeah, it gets me every time. <laughs> do you think at your age this is right? It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that one. A uh, really good episode. Next is going to be our number seven episode, which is Mr. Monk Stays in Bed, which we just watched. Really good episode. Love Super Monk. Love all of the little things that Monk does when he's sick. He's got the humidifier, the dehumidifier, Mm -hmm. the Kleenexes, the Ziploc bags, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And we also get to see Detective Natalie Mm -hmm. going on her adventure on her own and solving the case by herself. Mm -hmm. Snowflake is black. (laughs) Yeah, it's a really good episode. It's really funny, as we said before, Super Monk. And, yeah. So, number six pick is The Captain's Marriage. Uh, it's a sad episode. Was this our first episode? Our first episode was Mr. and Mrs. Monk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is a really good one because at the beginning when Agent Sharky is baiting Captain Stottlemyre like, oh... Where's your wife on Tuesday nights? Oh, at least mm-hmm. I take care of Karen and you don't. All this stuff that's mm-hmm. like building up to this, pa, sock him in the face. Yeah. So good. Like you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Like. That's one of the best parts. Yeah, it's so good. And then you don't know whether to believe Karen or not. You really didn't know whether to believe Karen because you'd never seen her before. Yeah. So that was fun. Mr. Monk and Natalie follow Karen. So then you're like, where is she going? Who is she meeting with? She does meet with a man, so you don't know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And then Captain Sottlemyre goes to anger management. He Mm -hmm. gets the stress Mm -hmm. yo-yo. That's so funny. He breaks the stress yo-yo on Officer Sharky. Mm -hmm. He messes up the lineup. Randy, number four, please stop kicking number seven. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and no, and the agent Sharky, Officer Sharky, when he goes to Karen and is like, Starts professing his love to her. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this guy. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, she serves him with the papers. Yeah. It's a great episode. Um, Number five. This is top five. We're in top five now. We are in top five. Mr. Monk and Mrs. Monk with fake Trudy, fake wife. We see depressed Monk and sad to watch. It's our first episode. It was our very first episode. Yeah. The comedy in this episode, well, we have one particular scene, which is really good, where Captain Sotomayor is talking to Monk, and he's like, you know what, Monk? I really appreciate you, and I am so glad that you're on the force, and you're so cool, and he's, he's just giving him a ton of praise, right? He's just, you're the man, right? And so Monk had left at, like, the words Monk, right? He was like, <laughs> you're the best, Monk, and then boom, Monk leaves, and Randy comes up, doesn't hear anything about Monk, and he thinks Stottlemyre's talking to him. So Stottlemyre thinks he's talking to Monk, and Randy thinks Stottlemyre's talking to him. And it's really funny. And so Randy, the whole episode, is like, no, you're the man, Captain Stottlemyre. He says, I love you. <laughs> he says, I love you. <laughs> he's like, then Captain notices that's Randy, and he's uh-huh. like, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. That's such a good episode. And then Randy messes up the whole thing. He's like, oh, well, I just figured you'd want me to because, you know, I'm the man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he's like, I was talking to (laughs) Monk for crying out loud. That's really funny. So uh, ranking number four is Mr. Monk gets struck, which is so, 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 so funny. Like, that's the only reason I rated it that high. Not the only reason. I rated that a nine. So that episode is so funny, and you just made me laugh so much last episode. Mm -hmm. Yep, we see, of course, Drunk Monk. Mm-hmm. We see him. Kepi, well, Kepi, stop. Sottlemyre. Sottlemyre, show your vet. Show. <laughs> show it. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Look at all these criminals. Just look at him. <laughs> That's so good. Just two guys 
sitting in a revolving restaurant. <laughs> you look like a moose. <laughs> Oh, you know, we did talk about was, um, you know, sometimes I turn on the TV at night (laughs) and I just mute it and I just pretend they're all my friends and they're talking to me. (laughs) Hi, Adrian. How are you? Oh, my gosh. That was so sad. And then we also have this episode is really good. We have the foot wine. The foot he can wide. taste the toes, and in between the toes, yeah. we have the sea swirl sniff spit, sip spit spit yeah yeah, and then he's freaking out the whole time. We got the hanging plant, the hanging plant. <laughs> oh, man, the actual crime is actually really good. Yeah, it the, is good. The the brothers who's not really the brother, the pop and the soda. He was bilingual, mm-hmm. and all this like I, that's I thought it was pretty clever. And then Natalie's the one that. That actually ends up summing it all up mm-hmm. with Monk can't do a summation. She's like, man, this tastes like, it's gross. And Stonewall's like, that's aqua velva. And she's like, ew, aqua velva. Yeah. Yeah. That's her, I, it all ties together really well. Oh, and then Trudy and Monk's little dinner. Oh, yeah. Of course, that's awesome. So sweet. That's so sweet. Yeah. Great. Fantastic episode. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. would you like to do number three on the top three, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, let's do a little countdown, Toby. <laughs> Mr. Monk and the Secret Santa. All right. All right. So, it's a really great episode, and it builds up a lot, a lot, a lot of suspense with the wine bottle. Mm-hmm. You're dreading that moment whenever they open or someone eventually drinks that yeah. wine. So, yeah, it's a really great episode. Yeah. Great story. Yeah, and like you said before, the Alice Westergren. Yes. She, you know, or a.k.a. Allison Wintergreen. <laughs> um, she's in the episode for quite a while, and she has very big parts, but they don't let you in on that. She's the guy, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I feel like that's a really, whereas we don't, we don't get that a lot where we actually get to see the person a lot and then don't know who it is. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, you're a flincher. You uh, can't prove anything. And it's not a, uh, also a, where the guy was just sitting in the very background the whole time. Yeah. And yeah. you've never, or you've never seen it before. Yeah. Something crazy. Um, also, we have one of Randy's first little ditties, right? Captain Sotomayor is, oh, yes. is it? Has his guitar and they're singing, um, Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is a night of the I think so. Birth. He's like, Oh, night. <laughs> it's so funny. Divine. Oh, oh night. I, I, oh, night. Oh, night. Divine. Yeah. So it was nice. Yeah. Randy hits that harmony, <laughs> it just sails. All right. Obviously, we have our number two episode, which is we don't really have to do the drum roll, but do our runner up. Runner up. (laughs) Mr. Mr. Monk Monk gets gets jury duty. duty. Okay. I really like this episode. It's probably your fave, huh? Uh huh. Yeah. The murder is great. It is uh, really fun to watch. It's high suspense. It's. It's for all the marbles, kind of, because the whole police department's like, okay, we got this guy, we can't let him leave. Mm -hmm. Like, the B-plot being the escaped guy really ties in. I love when they do that in the show, where they tie the A-plot and the B-plot, like, super well with a little bow and a cherry on top. It's a great episode and a great example of them doing that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It gets you right from the start when they get Escobar Mm -hmm. and... Randy and the captain get Mm -hmm. their awesome chase scene, which is really good. And then you have that sense of, like, something's probably going to go wrong, but it's not going to be the captain's fault. Yeah. (laughs) But you're like, you know, well, not when I was in charge. Mm -hmm. Like, you have that cool part. And then also, like you said, it ties those storylines together great. But just everything about Monk being on the jury, him trying to get out of the jury, then he's on the jury, nobody believes him, and then he convinces them. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, Mr. Monk thinks he's being drafted. One of my favorite scenes, I brought Cobb salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You want you want hot toddy and mustard? <laughs> There's a body in the dumpster. <laughs> I just have the cob salad. <laughs> no ID. No idea. No, no ID. ID. No idea. <laughs> no ID, Mr. Monk. No ID. No, no idea. idea. Just check his identification, Natalie. <laughs> Mr. Monk, no ID. No ID. Oh, no idea. <laughs> we have, uh, he threatened to scratch his nose. <laughs> he, he said he was going to scratch his nose. Okay. <laughs> made it sound like a threat. <laughs> we say that a lot. I know, we, we've said that like 50 times since then. <laughs> See that's that's how a monk quote turns into classic monk like yeah. you you forget where it's from because you just say it so much you're like you made it sound like a threat. <laughs> and of course Benny Hanna's. Yeah. Got to yeah. got to meet up at Benny Hanna's one year from now. <laughs> got to do it. So, yeah. Okay, so we'll do the number 1 episode right now which is Mr. Mr. Monk goes, goes home, home again. again. So basically, there's so much to say about this episode. John Turturro has an amazing performance, and it's hilarious, and the murder and crime is very thought out, very planned, and great writing. I love it. I love the whole putting the candy bars into circulation with mm-hmm. the Neptune bars. I love his weather patterns of mm-hmm. his candy and then he has one bar left over. Like, what a great detail to say, I had one bar left over from last year, and it yeah. happens to be a Neptune bar, and he happens to eat it. Like, yeah, it fits together a little too perfectly, but it's like, it's perfect. It's perfect where it's not in your face. Mm-hmm. And then again, with the sad scenes of the dad, and then the brother dying in the van almost. And yeah. um, we've got, you know, the cardiologist... I wrote the manual Mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm a cardiologist. Uh, We've got cross at the green, not in between. (laughs) We've got, I guess. The dead pigeon. The dead pigeon. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, We've got, I guess everybody has their quirks. (laughs) Like, I guess what they do. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, Natalie and Ambrose's maybe. So sweet. Such a good episode. That was a, that's a really, really great episode. Oh, you know what? We didn't mention this with the pirate thing. They asked all the kids that are at the park, like, he's like, oh, I think this little kid with that little fro, and he's dressed as a hippie, and he's like, oh, I think I saw him go over there. And he's like, mm-hmm, are you sure you saw oh, that? Yeah. Are you sure you weren't hallucinating? <laughs> and now he's like, Mr. Monk, he's not a real hippie. <laughs> that's so funny. That is um, so funny. Uh, so is that it? But yeah, I think so. Miss so, Trump goes home again, number one episode. That's it for rate right the season. It and is. That's it for season. It's four. pretty strong. I feel like it's pretty strong, Mr. and Mrs. Monk, Mr. Monk yeah. is drunk, Secret Santa, the jury goes home again. Like if I mean if you need, you know, an episode, um like it's it's actually kinda of funny because like I'm trying to catch up Noah on some of the older seasons right now. And I go back to look at my rankings for my other seasons, mm-hmm. one, two, and three. And I look at my hi- my highest ones, and I'm like, okay, watch this one. Okay, watch this one. Okay, watch this one. Mm-hmm. And and he's really impressed <laughs> because I yeah. show him all of the highest rated episodes. So it's good. Yeah. It's good. So that's it for season four, really. Um, do you have any final thoughts as, like, a, a whole, like, I mean, I know we kind of said we had a very strong top, I'd say, oh, man, top seven. Pretty strong. Yeah. 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 Number eight's pretty good as well. Yeah. So I get excited. Once it starts with stays in bed, I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so just to recap for everyone, number 16 is The Big Reward. Number 15 is The Other Detective. Number 14 is Mr. Monk and the Dentist. Number 13 is The Fashion Show. Number 12 is Little Monk. Number 11 is The Office. Number 10 is Mr. Monk Bumps His Head. Number 9 is is Mr. Monk and the Astronaut. Number eight is The Wedding. Number seven is Mr. Monk Stays in Bed. Number six is The Captain's Wife. Number five, Mrs. Monk. Number four, Mr. Monk Gets Drunk. Number three, Mr. Monk and the Secret Santa. Number two, Mr. Monk Gets Jury Duty. And number one, Mr. Monk Goes Home Again. 
Great season. Yeah. Great season. Uh, comparative to the other seasons, in my opinion, again, trying to catch Noah up on them. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, yeah, I would say having Ambrose on again helps a lot. The jury duty is a really strong episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, Secret Santa is, I don't think we, I think this, I want to say this is our first Christmas episode. So Christmas, uh, the Christmas specials on Monk are all really good, I think. So I like that we have that in this season. Um, we did learn, you know, a lot about uh, him and Natalie more because, mm-hmm. again, this is her first full season. Yeah. So we started to see her settle into her own, which makes it also really good. I think it was, I think it was great. And I'm excited for season five. I am so Day inside. Excited. We're going to pull out all the stops, too. We're just, like, ready for it. I'm just waiting for us to be able to take notes on season five. Because I keep in mind, everyone, I've never seen Monk. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting to watch it. I'm so excited. I am excited. And thank you for everyone who has supported, supported us. us, really. Yeah. Uh, Scratchy Gal. Yep. My number one yep. fan. Thank you. So, yeah. And, yeah, she also, she was our winner of our... Uh, mystery box. Yeah. Mystery monk box. Our mystery monk box. That's what yeah. we're going to call it. She came up with the name too, Great so that's monk. awesome. Our mystery monk box, she was the winner of that. It had lots of goodies. It had some notes from the show, like some of our original show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, I made a copy for myself, but I sent in the originals. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that was cool. We gave a signed disc from Monk Season 4. Yep. And we put some junk in, of course, so some that you junk, can. Junk, our favorite snacks, mm-hmm. and also. Some Gladys sticky notes, the kissing fur. We have a bunch of the what you would rate how crazy Monk is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so it's a lot of goodies. It's a mystery. It's a lot of goodies, the next yeah. one will be a mystery to you all. So make sure that you go to Instagram. Yeah. Uh, that's where we're most active. Go to Instagram at Junk Monk Podcast. Uh, also leave us a voicemail because you know we're cool like that. Yay. But yeah, enter the giveaways. All you got to do is like the pictures and all this good stuff. Please, so please, 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 uh, you please. will be a choice to that and. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, we're going to pull out all the stops for season five, guys. So don't, don't be like, oh, it's just an No. Mm-hmm. Come back for season five. It's going to even be better than this finale. Please, please, please. We're going to have a new so episode. Good. We're going to pull out all the stops. And we're even, we've got, you know, t-shirts we're going to be coming out with soon. Mm-hmm. We're in the works. We just, you know, got off of FaceTime where we were actually designing the shirts. Mm-hmm. And so we are really excited. We hope you're yeah. excited too. And I'd like to mention me and Candace spent a lot of time on our custom Clue board game because we noticed a bunch of shows have a Clue, but Monk does not have a Clue board game. So we made our own Clue yes. that you can see on our Instagram Live yeah. that we had. Yeah. So you can and look at that. Yeah, or Facebook. If you have Facebook, it's Facebook. on there too. Yeah. So, yeah, check us out. Check um, us out. Other than that, yeah, our Clue game was really fun. We played... So I did win once, and mine was, it was Captain Sotomayor with a rope in Adrian's, Adrian's apartment. apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a lot of fun. It was so, so much was fun. So much fun. They're all, like, customized. The places we have the Davenport Estate. We have Adrian's apartment, Sharona's kitchen. Dr. Kroger's office. Dr. Kroger's office. And then we also have all the players. And all the cards. It's and all so the cards. Are, it's so good. It's so fun. So. It's so much fun. So... Thank you guys again. Thank you so much. We will see you next time. It'll be season five. I'll see you in season five, you guys. Until next time. Bye. The Junk Monk Podcast. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram. If you want to know more about Candace, she's at Hardens and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noah L. Too bad. Also, you can catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. You'll thank me later. <laughs>